Tame Impala has become one of the most culturally influential acts of the past decade, all led by one man responsible for the music, Kevin Parker. His journey hasn't been quick by any means. It's a story of a slow grind, putting in work daily out of nothing more than pure love for music. Kevin is best known for Tame Impala, but his story goes well beyond the confines of a singular musical project. To better understand Kevin Parker and Tame Impala, let's take a look back on how his early life shaped him into one of the most prominent psychedelic rockers of our time. Kevin was born on January 20th, 1986 in Sydney, Australia, but he spent most of his childhood in Perth. Both of his parents were originally from Africa, his father was from Zimbabwe, and his mother was from South Africa, but were living in Sydney when they had Kevin. His dad was the chief financial officer of a mining company, and his job required them to move to a very remote part of Western Australia called Kalgoorlie, about a seven hour drive east of Perth, which is where Kevin spent his early childhood. His parents divorced when he was three, and both both halves of the family moved to Perth after their split. Kevin lived with his mom and new step family in the suburb of Mount Lawley, but was able to visit his dad as he only lived about 15 minutes away in Cottesloe. The divorce made his childhood rather difficult, so he turned to music at a young age to combat the loneliness. His father was in a cover band, something he did on the side for fun, and he's the one who taught Kevin about music. His band would cover various artists such as the Beach Boys, Supertramp, and the Beatles. Kevin was inspired by Michael Jackson at a young age, and he started writing songs when he was seven. He started playing the drums when he was 11, then he started playing the guitar, and by age 12 he was recording music using two tape machines. Although music was an outlet for Kevin, he began acting out in other ways during his early teen years, and vandalism, shoplifting, and graffiti became a regular thing for him. He got caught trying to steal wallets from a surf shop, which ended up with him being taken back to his parents' house in a police car. He started smoking weed when he was 11, and his mom found a bag of it in his room when he was 13. She also found a bong, spray paint cans, empty beer bottles, and various things he had stolen from a hardware store. His parents assumed that his friends were all bad influences, so he wasn't allowed to hang out with them anymore. His dad even called all of his friends' parents to tell them that their kids had been giving Kevin weed, so they all got in trouble, even the ones who didn't even smoke weed, so they all ended up hating Kevin. When he was 13, he met Dominic Semper in a music class he was taking at John the 23rd College in Perth. Dominic is now a member of the Tame Impala live band and has been involved with other musical projects alongside Kevin, and I'll talk more about those later in the video. They both were obsessed with music, and Kevin would share a new song with Dom every day who would give him brutally honest feedback, and they would also play covers of popular songs together. By the time Kevin was 14, he was dead set on becoming a rock star. When Kevin was 15, his parents decided to get back together, so the family moved back in together, but it didn't go well at all and fell apart within a month. Kevin did his best to escape the drama by moving into a small flat in his mother's backyard, but soon after he had a falling out with her and he moved back in with his dad. His dad bought him an 8-track recorder when he was 16 and he began recording music with it every night. By the time he was 18, he was gigging at pubs around Perth while also working a job as a law clerk delivering court documents. He he eventually quit that job to focus on music, but his father warned him about trying to make a career out of music, as he said it would take away the fun and mystery of it. Kevin decided to listen to his father's advice, and he enrolled in a university to study engineering, but he lost interest quickly and studied astronomy instead. He wasn't doing well in school, and all he could think about was music. He was making friends though, and he finally felt like he belonged somewhere. While he was still in school, he moved into a rundown duplex with his friends on Troy Terrace. He dropped out of school and got a part-time job at a liquor store, but spent most of his time at the house working on music. At the time, the Perth music scene was basically a bunch of different houses of musicians, and their house on Troy Terrace was basically the psychedelic rock house. There was music equipment all over the place, and it reeked of weed and cigarettes. Everyone who lived there had a bunch of bands they were in, and no one really had any ambitions of becoming famous, they all just enjoyed making music. Being surrounded by people like that made Kevin lose his rock star ambitions, as he fell more in love with the process of making music. He didn't care what would come of it, he was just having fun. Around that time, he started a band with Dominic Semper and Luke Epstein called the Dee Dee Dums. They would gig around Perth, never taking things too seriously as they often showed up to their gigs stoned. They sometimes played with other bands that were clearly seeking fame, which was comical to Kevin because they would just have all this fancy equipment and a curated image while Kevin's band would just be goofing off. 
He never thought that he would achieve much success, and he was perfectly content with that. Eventually, the Dee Dee Dumb's musical style began shifting into something more groovy, melodic, and lush, and in 2007, the band was renamed Tame Impala. Although they would play together live as a band, Kevin made it clear to the other members that if things took off, then Tame Impala on record was just him, as he was the one making the entirety of the music, and the rest of the band members just helped translate his music into a live show. When he was on his way to his final astronomy exam, he got a call from Modular Recordings who wanted to sign him. They had come across some recordings he had posted on MySpace, which caught their attention. He accepted their offer and turned the car around, and he never showed up to the exam. There was actually some confusion with the deal, as Kevin had to explain to Modular that they technically aren't a band, and that he produced all of the records by himself. Soon after signing with them, he began working on his first album. Modular was okay with Kevin producing the records, but they wouldn't let him mix them, and they brought in Dave Fredman as the mix engineer. Dave is known for his work with The Flaming Lips, Mercury Rev, and MGMT. Unfortunately, his father passed away during this time after a long battle with cancer, so it was a difficult and confusing time for Kevin. He released his debut self-titled EP with Modular Recordings in 2008, and it reached number 10 on the ARIA charts, and three of the songs got radio play. Desire Be, Desire Go, Half Full Glass of Wine, and Skeleton Tiger. That same year, they went on various tours as support for UMI, The Black Keys, Yesair, and MGMT. They also had some festival appearances, a sold-out Australian headline tour, and a five-stop UK tour. The following year, they released their first single, Sundown Syndrome, which was recorded while on their UK tour. Their band was seeing commercial success very quickly early on, as they received media placements, with Sundown Syndrome being used in the Oscar-nominated film The Kids Are Alright, and Glass Half Full of Wine was used in HBO's Entourage. Two years later, they released their debut album, Inner Speaker, on May 21st, 2010, and that same year it won Australian Album of the Year at the J Awards hosted by Triple J. One year after that, it won Album of the Year at the Rolling Stone Awards. Just a few months after the release of the album, Kevin revealed in an interview that his second album was almost already finished, though fans had to wait quite a while before it was made available. Inner Speaker was recorded at the famous Wave House overlooking the Indian Ocean in Yalangup. The house the house was built as a recording studio, and many famous artists have recorded there, such as the Beastie Boys and Fatboy Slim. That house is also where Kevin recorded part of Currents, and he actually ended up buying the house in 2020. The property also has a natural limestone amphitheater, perfect for intimate live performances with friends. The success of Inner Speaker gave them the opportunity for their first North America headline tour, with 20 stops in the US and Canada. About two and a half years later, the second Tame Impala album was released, Lonerism. It received platinum status in Australia, and it also won Album of the Year at the J Awards and Rolling Stone Awards, just like the body of work that preceded it. Kevin said that Lonerism represented a departure from his previous work by incorporating an expanded sonic palette, more emotional songwriting, and a more pronounced narrative perspective. Most of the album was recorded at Kevin's home in Perth, though part of it was recorded in France, which is where Kevin took the picture for the album cover. The picture was taken at the Luxembourg Garden in France, and shows the perspective of someone looking onto a crowd of people behind bars, which illustrates the concept of the album title, Lonerism. While in France, Kevin also produced and played on the self-titled Melody's Echo Chamber album, the project of Melody Prochet, who Kevin actually dated for a bit. Tame Impala received their first Grammy nomination when Lonerism was nominated for Best Alternative Album. Not much later, in early 2014, Kevin began working on his third album that we now know as Currents. He stated in an interview with Triple J that his inspiration for the sound of Currents came from Fleetwood Mac and how pure and clean their sound is. The album was finished within a year, and it was released in the summer of 2015. It became their best-selling album, with 1.3 million copies sold worldwide. During his Reddit AMA in 2015, Kevin said that up until very recently, he had received no money for any album sales outside of Australia, stating that someone high up spent all of the money before it ever got to him. Two years after the release of Currents, a collector's edition of the album was released, which contained three B-sides and two remixes.
In 2018, Kevin really started to branch out by doing some unexpected collaborations. That year, he teamed up with electronic producer Zoo on the single My Life, and he also was featured on the track Whiplash with rapper Theophilus London. He also made an appearance on Saturday Night Live playing bass for Travis Scott, and John Mayer was also a part of the band. In January of 2019, Tame Impala was announced as a headliner for Coachella. They had played the festival three times before, but this was the first time that they got a headlining spot. In March of that year, Kevin released the single Patience off of his upcoming album The Slow Rush and he teased some of the music from the upcoming album on Instagram. They were invited to perform on Saturday Night Live that same month and they played Patience as well as Borderline which was the first time the song was revealed and it was released 13 days later on April 12th. It wasn't until late October of that year that the album name was revealed and it was officially released on Valentine's Day in 2020. The deluxe box set of the album was released two years later in 2022. A month after the release of The Slow Rush, Kevin appeared on The Weeknd's album After Hours, where he produced and provided background vocals for the track Repeat After Me. That same year, Kid Cudi sampled Tame Impala's Love Slash Paranoia on his track Dive. In 2022, Tame Impala collaborated with Diana Ross on the track Turn Up the Sunshine for the movie Minions The Rise of Gru, and in 2023, they collaborated with Gorillaz on the track New Gold. We also got a collaboration with Thundercat this year on the track No More Lies. Kevin's production credits are varied and extensive, and they're definitely worth checking out if you're a big fan of Tame Impala. You might actually be surprised at all of the projects he's been involved with. Kevin has been a member of slash been involved with various musical groups hailing from Perth. Perth's music scene is its own little bubble, as it's completely isolated from the rest of Australia. All of the other major Australian cities, such as Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne, and Adelaide, are all on the eastern coast of the continent, with Perth being all alone on the west. This isolation allows the vibe of the Perth music scene to flourish on its own, separate from other Australian influence. Granted, this isolation can cause issues for rising artists, as it's more expensive for them to tour, which causes some of them to eventually leave the city. The scene is very tight-knit, which allows for a lot of collaboration. As previously mentioned, the DD Dumps were the roots of what Tame Impala became, but Kevin has had his hands in many other projects as well. The project that is most notable to the Tame Impala fanbase is the band called Pond. Pond shares some members with the Tame Impala live band as they are longtime friends of Kevin's. He used to play the drums for them from 2009 to 2011, and he's done some production work for them in the past. Since Kevin makes all of the Tame Impala music himself, Pond is the creative outlet of some of the Tame Impala band members, though not all members of Pond are members of Tame Impala and vice versa. Oh, hello. We're Nick Muscle Creek. Another project Kevin used to be involved with is Mink Muscle Creek, which was formed in 2005 alongside Nick Albrook and Shiny Joe Ryan, both members of Pond. Nick was formerly a member of Tame Impala as well. The band built up a fan base around Perth, and in 2008 they received a government grant of $10,000 to record an album, but due to circumstances outside of their control, it was never released. However, it was eventually leaked online under the title Kingdom Tapes, but the band ended up going their separate ways. They did come back together in 2011 to make a live album that was made over the course of a week, and it's now available online, but that was the last of Mink Muscle Creek. In his early days of being involved with the Perth music scene, Kevin was a part of a band called Space Lime Peacock alongside Jay Watson and Nick Albrook of Tame Impala. They recorded an album worth of demos, and though none were ever released, they were leaked on the internet. Kevin and Cam Avery, a founding member of Pond and member of the Tame Impala live band, formed the band Kevin Spacey for a fundraiser in Perth. They later changed the name to the Golden Triangle Municipal Funk Band and changed it again to AAA Aardvark Get Down Services, and they have done a few gigs under that name. While they were using the name the Golden Triangle Municipal Funk Band, they created a song called Daffodils, which was later used in collaboration with Mark Ronson on his Uptown Special album. From all of this, we can clearly see how dedicated Kevin Parker is to his love of music, and that dedication has brought so much joy to his fans over his nearly two decade long career as Tame Impala. His life has changed dramatically from those early days living on Troy Terrace, but the soul of his music has been ever present. These days, when he isn't touring or recording music, he spends his time at home in the Los Feliz neighborhood of Los Angeles with his wife Sophia Lawrence and their daughter Peach. 
He recently fractured his hip while running a half marathon, but he plans to move forward with all the upcoming shows and hopefully he will have a speedy recovery. The music of Tame Impala has been a colorful addition to the past decade and beyond, and for that, I want to give Kevin a big thanks for the positive impact he has had on so many of us.